Hello friends and welcome to Charlie's Creative Corner. I am happy to see you. Glad you could come by. It's been a while since I've done a video. Things have been really busy, but I have not forgotten about you. I promise. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, so we're going to continue on doing the beaded crane bag today. Let's see if we can get that finished and knocked out. But uh, well, we'll go over a few other things real quick, kind of explain why it's been so long. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've been sitting on this for a while. I've had it done for a while, but I feel like I've been sitting on it forever. So uh, things have been really crazy busy. I have been working on doing some handmade jewelry that I am selling. And so that has occupied a very large portion of the past like week and a half for me so i have created a lot and a lot of jewelry um let me grab my tray here i'll show you kind of what i've been doing here uh i'm selling these on my store on my ebay store um so it's it's been one of those things if you're interested in purchasing them my Store name is XX Shars, S H A R S, and Stitches, and another two X's behind that. That is my eBay store name. So if you are interested in purchasing any, but this is what I've been working on. Well, then they'll go fall. Hang on. I'll just pick them up. I have a few. I haven't posted these yet. I'm waiting on some supplies uh, for packaging first. I have a little like earring set here that I've made. Really pretty little things. And those have bracelets with them. And then I also have um, like here's a, uh, this is river shell earrings here. Really pretty. And I have, uh, this is a pair of uh, turquoise earrings really nice cute little simple things those I have a few sets of these and they have a uh, bracelets that go with them also and um, here is like the these are little peacock feather ones and they're really pretty and those also have bracelets to go along with them so I've been really busy that's just a little taste of it I've made like 25 sets of earrings and some of them do also have bracelets with them. So I've been a busy little bee. So that's why you haven't seen me. I'm sorry. I know it's been a really long time, but I am trying to kind of branch out and do some, some little money making things, something I can make a little income on, a little extra income. And, you know, it keeps me busy. So hang on one second. Okay, sorry. I... <laughs> have my, I repotted, I have a palm plant um, and I repotted it and the cats seem to think that now they need to chew on it. So it's a way bigger pot and so I can't put it on the same shelf I had it on up high and so they go a little bit crazy on it and I had to kick one of them out. So, but, uh, so yeah, I've been busy making a lot of jewelry and I have worked a little bit on my other projects. I did get my bag uh, stitched. I don't have it finished. Obviously, we're going to all do that together at, in the video. Um, but it, it's just it's been a lot. <laughs> so that is what I have been doing. Um, let's see what else uh, I did finish. Well, you know, I was working on that really big loomed piece and it was huge. Well, I did finish it. So this was the, uh, this is the finished pro project here. The unfortunate thing is, is I did not give myself enough uh, warp thread to do the whole pattern. And so as you can see, the pattern is not finished and I didn't know what I was going to do with this I still kind of don't but I think what I might do is I might take it and I might kind of fold it like this and then fold it over and then make a little bag 
or something out of it I thought would be kind of cool. Um, unfortunately, it didn't, I didn't give myself enough warp thread. I did, I warped the loom differently than I usually do, where you just kind of wrap it, you know, instead of going one by one and giving yourself that excess thread. I didn't do that on this one, and I really wish I would have. I thought I had measured it right, and I didn't. So it ended up, you know, coming out, uh, you know, I was so close. I was, I was, that's all I needed there. It just, it wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. So, uh, unfortunately it's still, it's, it's still very beautiful and I will do something with it. I do think I will make a little, like maybe like a little coin purse or something with it. I have to figure that out. That's going to be one of my projects later when I'm not so overwhelmed with, uh, jewelry and such. Uh, Let's see other creations. Uh, the other thing I'm working on right now at the moment is my side fringe bag. And I have gotten quite a bit done. I pulled out that, I had lazy stitched on it. And I pulled that out and I did my bead applique on it, which I am much happier with. This is all I have on it. I still have a lot further to go, but hopefully I can focus a little more on it in the next week or so and not kind of just let it sit there and, you know, miss me. So this is what I have done on that so far. And that's just my bead applique. As you can see, I'm still got a ways to go. I still have to do all this and the other little squares down here. And then also the uh, flap uh, that goes over the front and figure out a snap and all that stuff too. And then sew it together. So I do have a ways to go on it. But I really was happy with how the, uh, the blue here came out and also the yellow with the black highlights. I think it looks really, really pretty. So it does look a little better. I'm, I'm really glad I pulled out that uh, lazy stitch I had stitched on there. I think it really did. Uh, it, it looks better this way, I think. Now, um, as far as what's going on in my life, not a whole lot. Uh, just been, like I said, busy working on some extra income, trying to make a little extra income and share my jewelry creations with other people. I, uh, I uh, found some sales with some real gemstone beads and I was excited about that. And I just kind of, I came home and I was like myself jewelry and I'm like, why don't I make this and sell it? Because these are really pretty and I think other people might enjoy it. So. I have them up there for pretty low price. I'll put a little uh, link down below uh, to my store. And if you want to go check it out, feel free. No pressure. But if you do, that's awesome. So I appreciate it. Now, um, unfortunately, I've been so busy. I haven't had any time to go out and explore or take walks or anything. The weather's been a little weird. It's been cloudy, rainy, cloudy, rainy. It's can't figure out what the heck it wants to do. It was windy as crazy yesterday. And so the weather hasn't been ideal for it anyway. So it was kind of a good time to set it home and work on projects. So uh, not much else going on, I'm trying to think on my side of the world. Uh, just been doing a lot of working and reading and that's about it. My cats have been little stinkers the last couple days. So I've been playing with them a lot, trying to wear them out a little bit. I, I did get a bird feeder, so I'm happy about that. I got a, a little hopper feeder and it has two little places to put suet. And then I also had, before I had a uh, thistle feeder, a little cling one where they can cling on there and eat. But I had to get, I didn't have a shepherd's hook because the old place I lived in, I just hung it on my tree. So I went out and got a shepherd's hook and I got a new feeder and we're getting some birds, but not as many as I'd like, but it's spring. So there's a lot going on in the bird world. So maybe we'll get some more visitors here in the summer. Uh, but the cats love to watch it. I put it in a spot where I, I put a little, uh, I don't know what you call them, ottoman or something that you can put your feet up on. I put that in front of the window and so the kitties can sit in the window and watch the birds. We've had some finches and doves and starlings and grackles, you know, but I love them all. 
I don't care. I know a lot of people hate certain birds, but I love them all. So I'm glad they're coming by and enjoying some food and I can help them out a little bit. Um, nothing else really going on. Uh, like I said today, we're going to work on this uh, crane bag. Now, we're going to learn this together because I have not made a full bag yet. So this is going to be something that we're going to kind of learn and work on together. Um, so if I make mistakes, I'm sorry, but you might want to kind of watch before you do it. I don't know. I hope I don't. I'm going to try not to, but we are going to get this beautiful thing done. I will show you my finished one here. This is my finished one. It did end up a little tiny bit crooked. I think I went off on one row somewhere and I'm kind of bummed, but it's not really that um, noticeable. So I'm not, I didn't take it out and redo it or anything. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I don't care. I'm not that picky. So, you know, if I was like selling this or giving this to somebody, it would have to be perfect, but I'm not, it's for me. So I don't really care. And, uh, so this is, I'm just gonna, right here is my crane bag. It's not pretty turned out so lovely and so we're going to finish these today and part of that is going to be we're going to seal up our bottom so that we can put stuff in it so it's an actual bag and then we're going to also add any kind of fringe that we might, might want on the bottom of it and then we're going to put a necklace on the top and we can also do some edging up here to kind of make it look nice if we want i haven't decided on which what kind of edging i i don't know it might be just simple brick stitch or something but uh we'll figure that out as we go along i'm just going to kind of create as i go so this is going to kind of be a craft along slash tutorial because uh this is a uh, kind of a new territory for me so it's going to be one of those things where it's like uh maybe i'm doing this right We'll figure it out. But I think it turned out really lovely. I hope your guys' has turned out lovely too. And what I did, I just kind of, I snipped off my, I didn't have barely anything left over on the top with my string. So that's up to you if you want to snip that off or we're going to have to feed it down, feed the thread down the side to come out the bottom. This is my tail here. So it didn't take me too long. I was actually quite surprised. I've worked on it for, oh, about three or four days and it came out real nice but I think it turned out really pretty I am very happy with it it's very unique and very colorful and the beads look absolutely beautiful those I love those glass check beads they just shine and sparkle beautiful so we're gonna get going on that and we're gonna see if we can figure out how to do this we're gonna take it step by step and go from there uh so i will turn everybody around and oh i did get some new lights a new lamp i got a new lamp i got it at a uh, estate sale for a buck one dollar i'll show you it's cheap i like it see this guy here so i got a new lamp for a dollar and i put the brightest light bulb that i have in there so hopefully that might brighten up our uh, view a little bit and we'll be able to see a little easier. And then I stole another light bulb. I have a lamp hanging up here. You need a lot of light when you do beadwork. And uh, I stole another light bulb from one of the ceiling out, uh, ones in the ceiling. And it was way brighter than the one I had in there. So hopefully we can see a little better. It's really cloudy today. So hopefully that will improve our visuals a little bit. So I will get us turned around and we will get going on this and we will finish our bag. And I am excited about this. This should be really fun. So I will be right back. All right. So we have all our stuff here. I'm going to tell you what, what we need is pretty much the same stuff, but um, we're going to need our, our bag. We're going to need a pair of scissors. We're going to need a uh, beeswax. Our size zero Nymo thread and a size 11 beading needle. Okay. Now when you did your bag, I'm you you would have ended up finishing on the top here. 
and you may have excess string that's coming out and if you have a lot of it you can weave it through your your beads and come down to the bottom okay and that way you can just use that thread to seal the bottom because we're gonna seal this bottom first but I didn't have enough on mine so what I did is I just kind of weaved it in and out knotted it off and and hid the knot and, and snipped it like you would finishing off any other uh, beading so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get myself some uh, thread here get myself some thread going and we will get started here but I was really happy with how mine turned out I thought it turned out really pretty I hope your guys's turned out well too um, hopefully the instructions were clear enough to understand I'm gonna just kind of get my little curls out of my thread here I'm not gonna put a whole lot on here because I don't know how much I'm gonna need and my air conditioner is a little cold and I'm gonna wax up here and I'm gonna use the same color of beads that I used for the bottom there just so it blends in really nice now if you have a uh, pattern where the bottom row the closing row that we're going to be putting on is part of the pattern make sure that you flip that pattern upside down and work it in properly so it ma matches your pattern I'm going to thread my needle here maybe What is the deal? Let me try here. There we go. All right, get threaded up. All right, now find my, there we go. <clears throat> now we're gonna be stitching up together this part here. I'm gonna bring you in just a touch. I hope that lights enough for us. And uh, so I want to bring my thread in. I want to incorporate it in so I can thread it in. So what I'm going to do, I don't know. I don't think it matters which side we start on. But what you do want to do is you want to make sure you center your picture. Okay. You want to make sure that picture that you have is centered on there. Okay. And then... You take your bag, and if you look at the bottom here, bring in a little. If you look at the bottom here, there, that's better. You can see there's the one bead here, and then there's the two here, and the two here, and the two here, and then on this side, you'll also have the one bead. Now you want this to line up to where those bridges line up. See that? Because we're going to be going through those bridges. Okay. So I'm going to get my needle in here or my thread. I'm sorry. Get my thread started here somewhere along the way. I'm just going to find a little place to hook on to. If I can. works just like that and then I'm just kind of knot it in and I'm going to do a surgeon's knot Just like that. There we go. Now I'm going to figure out my center here. 
where we want to get her centered. Be about right there. And a good way to tell is if you still have your tail on, I hope you do, that is the one that you want on the end. Okay, and that way you kind of know where the center, how, it, how it's centered. I'm just going to kind of bring my needle in and incorporate my thread into the work here. I think that, okay, come up through here, and there we go. Now I'm going to cut the tail off of this one I just put on, because it's going to get in my way, I think. There we go. Now, that didn't hide very good. Maybe if I give it a little tug. So this is my tail here, so I just ignore that there. So <clears throat> we're going to need our beads. And I'm doing the dark green again, and I have a whole bunch down here, so I'm just going to dump that out like that. And I am going to start in here. So let me get these uh, getting tangled up in my stuff. There we go. So now we know that this end here, right here, is going to be like the, the edge. Okay, so that's where our tail is. So that's going to be our edge. And what we want to do is we want to pick up, hang on, I'm going to, I got to check something here. I don't think. Yeah, okay. So we're going to pick up one bead. Maybe. It looks like I got a gray in there. I'm going to try and do the same kind of sized beads so it doesn't look uneven. And then what you want to do is you want to take your needle and you want to go underneath the bridges. It's just like you would in brick stitch. It's kind of tricky on this first one. Because see the, the bridges here, this bridge here and this bridge here, they kind of look like a little arrow. Those are the ones you want to start with. And we're going to stick our, make sure you're getting under both of them like that. There we go. So get underneath both those bridges there. Okay. It's kind of hard to get through, but we'll get through that. And then pull through, right? And that, that bead will lay right there on the bottom. Now you want to bring your needle up through that bead, just like you would with brick stitch. It's just like brick stitching, but with double bridges, basically. Okay, and we'll pick up another bead. And then we're gonna go under the two bridges right next to that. Like that. Now, like I said, if you have a pattern, you wanna follow your pattern. And when you follow that pattern like this, your uh, foundation row you know, you're going to be going off of that. And so your bead will decrease by one when you do this. And that's a good thing to remember when you're doing a, like if a pattern was going into this area, into the bottom. Because see, this is our foundation row right here. And then this is our bottom. And then if your pattern was going to continue, you'd have one less bead than you would on the foundation row. All right, so we got two of them on there. We'll pick up another bead. These are all kind of wimpy. Maybe that's why they were all at the bottom of the barrel. And we'll go, oops, helps get on screen. Go through the two. And then pull through. And then come back up. Oh, come on. Beads running away from me. Back up through the bead like that. Here we go. OK. 
Okay. And just keep on going all the way across of your pattern. Such little wimpy little beads. Well, these might have been discarded rejects from the when I stitched the bag. And go back up underneath the two bridges. Try not to get a tangle. And my tail is wrapping into everything. There we go. And then we'll bring our needle back up through that bead. And pull through like so. And we'll just keep on going with this here. Pick up a bead. Stick it through those two bridges. Oh, I missed a, oh no, it just went down. See that? See how that went down there like that? We don't want that. I thought I'd missed it, but it actually just slid down the foundation row. So just kind of give it a tug and get it back up underneath that bridge. I guess that will be something to look out for there. And I want to kind of straighten things out a little here too. There we go. And we'll just keep working our way down that foundation row.
I'm going to work my way down to the end and then I'm going to come back. You guys just keep working on it. Just keep pick up a bead, go through the two bridges and back up through the bead, pick up a bead, go through the next two bridges and just keep doing that until we get back over to our end. Okay. And I will be right back. All right. I am on my, uh, last two here. So we'll do those real quick. I already have a bead on there. We'll pull that through. Keep getting tangled in my tail. I should probably just cut that silly thing off. I want to weave it in though. So we'll wait. And one more after this. Get one more bead. Trying to find some that have a little thickness to them. These are real thin little things. Probably use these up in my fringe, maybe. And this one's kind of tricky because it's right there on the end and it's kind of. Through there. And that's our last one. Just like that if I can get through the bead maybe there we go all right and now your bag should be all sealed up look at that oh that's awesome okay see the inside it's all sealed up sealed up like a bag Perfect. So your bag should be all sealed up. And that's that part of this. Now I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to do my fringe after I do my top edging, just because I don't want to get my fringe all wrapped up in everything. So I'm going to kind of weave this in and knot it and trim it. If I can get through this. It started storming, so it looks really, really dark in here. I'm sorry. It is raining right now. We've gotten so much rain lately. Getting my tail wrapped up in it again. So I'm going to, oh, whoops. <laughs> Derp, I went on the wrong end. Okay, we're going to get rid of this tail right now. I'm over it. So... I'm just going to thread that through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tail, weave it in and out and knot it a few times and snip it off. And then I'm going to do the same with the end from my, uh, from sealing the base. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So I got those, uh, trimmed off of there. So we're all nice and smooth there. Now I want to put, I think I want to do a, a peacock uh, edging at the top. So first of all, I'm not going to be using green. So I am going to get these beads out of my way here. I'm just going to toss them in the container real quick. I am going to be using the uh, navy blue for this. Let me grab it here. Now, I hope I don't, uh, like I said, I've, I have never done this bag before, so hopefully it all will line up nicely uh, with the edging here. We're going to give her a go. So I'm going to take my needle and we're going to get her started here. Now the peacock edging is what you see when it's like a three little point and then it just kind of adds a little frill uh, around the top there. Now, um, you want to start on the right-hand side of your bag. So I'm going to get my needle in here. Or sorry, my thread. Get my thread attached here. Trying to find a spot. Maybe. There we 
go. And I'm just going to knot, knot it up again here. Don't get caught up on things. Like my scissors. Get this out of the way. And I'm just going to bring this up and through. I'm going to try and find my edge. And I'm going to try and start off on the proper edge. And I believe that would be here. So it's about getting through the right spot. So I'm going to get right here. Here we go. Okay, so now we have our thread coming up out of the right side here. Okay, and you're going to want whatever color you're using. Okay. And now you want to put three beads on your needle. One, two, three. And then um, it's kind of like doing a regular uh, brick stitch. I'm trying to explain it here. Uh, and I mean that by like uh, you're going to be using your, your bridges. So it, it's similar. It's easy enough. We'll get through it here. So put your, you're coming up out of that bead. So bring your three beads down like so. Okay. And then you want to come underneath to the left. Let me bring you in a little bit of where you put your, where your thread's coming up. So to the left of that, you want to come underneath that thread. Okay. Like that. And pull and see your going to get kind of like that triangle shape there. See that there? Okay. And now you want to bring your needle up through that last bead, not the, the skip the other two, but come up through that last bead. Maybe. Now I'm drying. There we go. So come up through that last bead. Like so, and then pull up like that. And so for our first one, we're going to pick up the three beads. But from now on, we're only going to pick up two beads. OK, so we have our first three laid and see that adds like a nice little fringy uh, frill type pattern to the top. Kind of makes it really cute looking. So you want to come up through that last bead there. Now you want to pick up two beads. So pick up the two, okay, and then to the left of that, see you're, you went into this one here. Oops, sorry, you're not on the screen. <coughs> Excuse me. So you went under that one there, that one uh, bridge here. So now we want to go under this bridge next to that, right here, right next to it. And you remember, you only pick up two beads. So pick up two beads, go into that bridge next to it like that. Okay. And then you're going to want to come up through that last bead. Just like that. Let's see if I can get you in a little bit. And then just pull through. Oops, I got my tail in there. See, that kind of adds a little flair to the top of that. It looks real nice. And again, from now on, just pick up two, two beads. So one and two. Okay, those aren't really the right size. Try that. And then right next to where you're at, go under that bridge right next to that. 
right there. So you can see how it's kind of like the brick stitch, but it's not the brick stitch. And I call it picot. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's P-I-C-O-T. And this is a popular edging that a lot of people do with beading. And it's really fun and it makes it look really nice. So that'll add a nice little layer to our bag here. And just keep on going all the way around your bag. Pick up two, go under that bridge, right next to where you are, like that. Pull through and then go back up under and up and through the last bead of what you picked up there. Like that. Okay. And this will add a nice little, pretty little edge to our top of our bag. Let's see, two more. Pick up two beads. Under. Pull through. Under and through the last bead. Like so. Okay. And I'm going to continue doing this all the way around my bag, the front and the back here. So you want to go all the way around. And we will see if it lines up. I hope it does. Uh, I don't know. I have never done it, like I said, with this bag. So I don't know. We might have to adjust accordingly. We will see. I hope it lines up nice. But I will be right back. I'm going to continue to do this all the way around the bag. Okay? Be right back. All right, so I have uh, almost finished my top here. I got a couple more to do here. So let's get that last few done here. See if we line up correctly. And come up. You see that we have a little, just a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to add one bead, just the one, and I'm going to stick my needle. Oh, this is a test here. I'm trying this out. And we're going to stick our needle down through this first bead here, like that. We'll see if this lines it up nice. And voila, fills the gap. Now, what we want to do is we want to weave your inner in and out, because we're going to do our fringe next, the fun part. And we're going to tie it off and weave in and out and hide our thread. But luckily, we lined up. I'm happy about that. I'm just going to kind of work our way through here. I'm going to put a knot in. If I can get my needle in there. Sometimes it can be tricky. getting it in there to tie it off. Try it this way. Well, geez Louise, there we go. Do that again with a surgeon's knot and secure it nice. If I can do it again, <laughs> I had trouble enough the first time. Uh, there it is. Okay. And I'm going to do a surgeon's knot. So we're going to go in twice through the hoop. And give it a nice tug. And we'll go down through a few more beads back here just to hide the excess. Kind of tuck the knot in. Okay, now I'm going to trim this off here. 
There we go. And there is our Peacot Edge. Looks very pretty, very nice. I like that. I wasn't going to do an edge and I'm really kind of glad that I did. There's different edgings that you can do for the tops of these also. There's a, this, the, the Peacot Edge, there's a fringed edge where you can just hang some fringes. I wanted to do that, but that would have covered up the picture. So it's just about basically how creative you want to get with it. Now, I'm going to get these beads out of my way here. And we're going to work on the fringe for the bottom of the bag. Now, there are all sorts of different things that you can do when it comes to this. And the thing about this is it all the only limitations here are you. You are the only limitation within this. So basically, what I want to do with mine, I want to make mine kind of like a, whoops, bumping into stuff, kind of like the brick stitch earrings where they can be, I kind of want it to come down to a V and I want to have the design in there. Okay. Now I am not going to wing that because I don't want to get into it and string all those beads and then turn around and end up having to redo it or pull them out or things like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my bead pad aside here and I have printed out some square stitch slash loom graph paper, okay? And I've printed that out because I want to draw my fringe before I get into putting it on there. And this might seem like an unnecessary step, but like I said, I want to make sure that it's going to be done the right the first time. And I don't want to waste my time. We've already spent a lot of time on this and I don't want to waste that. Now, see, here's our pattern here that we had for our bag. And we had 46 rows. Well, we don't need 46 rows. We need 23 because we're not going to do a front and a back of fringe. We're only going to be doing the front. Okay. So, <coughs> pardon me. We need a row of 23. I only need one sheet of this. And this is a nice little, this was from my uh, bead Bible book. I just printed it out to use it. And uh, it shows 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then a couple little extras on the end. So we're all counted out there. Now I'm going to pick out my colors. And I really want to bring out that uh, light blue, because I really like that light blue. So I'm going to bring out that uh, periwinkle light blue color that I used. I really want to bring out the, uh, uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? Let's get creative. We need to have some green in there, obviously, but we'll do a little bit of dark green and a little bit of the light green or regular green as we called it. And I also want to do maybe some of the orange and the yellow. Dark blue. I think that should be good. Now, I need to figure out on here where we're at here. So we have there's five, let me go from the top, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. We don't need 25. We need 23. So five, we'll start here. Five, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, one, two, and three. So that's going to be the width there of our uh, fringe. Now, I don't know how many I want, how far I want to go down. So I'm going to go, let's see here. I want the green 
be on the top on these two. So that's my dark green. And we'll do that again over here. I'm just kind of filling in. I'm, I'm just kind of winging it. We're just going to get creative here and make up our fringe pattern. And just kind of figure out what we want to do with it. And, you know, you don't have to put seed beads only on your fringe. You can also put... Uh, any kind of other beads that you might have. If you had some fetishes or something like that, that'd be cool, or some metal beads or anything like that, you can add some gemstones, stuff like that. I'm not gonna do that with this. I want it to be all seed beads. Now, we're gonna do silly okay and we're gonna go What are we at here? 5, 10, 15. That might be really long. Yeah, maybe not. like that. Now, I'm just going three down with each. Kind of see how we go here. See where it lines up in the center. Boy, that's gonna be long. We might have to scratch this, start over, do less at the top here. We'll find our center first. That might not be too too bad. Let me see here. 35. I'm not actually too worried about it. I'm going to keep going with it. So. I think that'll be perfect. Now we just need to color in. That's our fringe pattern there. Now we just need to color in our colors. So I got my greens on there. I'm gonna keep, let's see, I wanna actually, so center, that's my center there. I wanna actually bring in some pattern here.
And I know this might be kind of boring to you guys. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get my uh, fringe pattern figured out before we got into it. I was going to try and bust this out real fast, guys. If you want to skip over this, that's fine. Or if you want to design with me, get your paper and start designing your own also. Or you can follow mine, whichever you want to do. But this way we'll have our uh, pattern all figured out here. I want to do these three. I want to do these. One, two, three. These three. I want to go down. I personally think designing is like one of the best parts of beadwork. I love to design uh, and create designs. I want to bring that down further. Yeah, like that. And I'm going to incorporate this dark blue in there. And it'd be nice if y'all could see, right? Bring it up a bit. One, two, 
Now, let's see. We're going to go. Oh, I went too, went too far. Okay, now we need some orange and yellow up in here. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Although I do want to bring this light green over. And do one more of those. There we go. Looks nice. Okay. Now, we're gonna bring in some blue and then orange and yellow, I believe. Oops, I screwed up. This here. These two. That eraser doesn't work very good on that.
I like those yellow tips on there. That's pretty. That should grab the light in the eye really nicely. And then we're going to make this all yellow down here. Now, I hope that's the proper amount of rows. I'm going to count it all and everything, and we'll double check ourselves. But there's my little fringe outline. I like the green in there. That looks really nice. So, all right. Let me double check myself, and then we will get going on our fringe. So I counted it up, and everything should line up perfectly. There's 23 of the base rows on the bottom here to work off of. So I got all my beads out, uh, all the colors that I need. I have a dark green, dark blue, a uh, light blue, or what mine is, is periwinkle, a regular green, and then a yellow and a yellow orange. And those are the same colors that I used in the bag, and I wanted to incorporate them down here at the bottom. So I got my thread my needle threaded. I do. I did about an arm's uh, wingspan and an arm's length because it's fringe. Fringe takes a lot of thread. So I'm going to get this threaded onto here. And there we go right away. Love it. And then we'll get going on our fringe. Do our surgeon's knot again. Make sure that's nice and tight and secure. And then we'll thread through. And oops, let me bring you in here a little bit. And then we're going to want to be coming through this last. Where am I at here? I'm going to be coming through the first or last, whichever side you pick to start on your with your fringe, of that uh, base that we beaded in to put the bag together. So we'll be coming out of that. So bring that down and through. Try not to get that tail wrapped up in there. There we go. And we'll start beading. And it will go off of the pattern that we did here. One, two, three, four, five, dark green. And three regular green. Oh, I'm sorry, two regular greens. There we go. And we'll bring that up. And then we'll skip that bottom bead and bring our thread up through those there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, I don't know if I can come up through the foundation every time, but I'm going to try to come up that. Actually, I think I'm just going to go couple in. And that way, there's not a big line at the bottom of our bag of thread. And that looks wimpy, but it'll get bigger. It'll get better as it goes. And then we're going to want to come down through the second bead there. So we want to come down through that second bead. I don't know if I can get through here. We're going to have to go through just the first layer of beads that uh, initial, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the foundation row, but the row that we used to seal the bag is what we're going to have to work our fringe through. Okay, so there's our first little fringy, and it'll get longer as we go along. So, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm going to mark off that I did that one so I know. Now we need one, two, three, four, five dark green. Two, three, four, 
five and five regular green. One, two, three, four, five. And like I said, whoops, that hole in that bead wasn't drilled good, so we'll have to drop him. You can do whatever kind of fringe that you prefer. That is entirely up to you. This is your project too. Oh, well, that one's not very, these, these, I forgot these light green beads. The holes are kind of tiny on those. It's up to you. It's your creation. So you do what you want with it. Okay. And I'm going to come up just through that first bead on that base row if I can see enough to do so. There we go. And then, you know, if you get a little hoop or something like that, you can just pinch that bottom bead and then pull and that will even it out. Okay. Now this is going to come down into a V. It'll look really cool. Now we want to come back down through the one next to that. Like that. Okay. And see, so you could add, like I said, you can add whatever size beads. Whoops. I kicked the tripod. Sorry. Whatever size beads you want, however many beads you want, whatever kind of fringe that you want. You could do hoop fringe. You could do little uh, circle at the end fringe or triangle at the end with uh, bugle beads or whatever you want or desire. This is your project too. So you do what you want with it and make it yours. But this is just what I'm doing. I just wanted to show you how to do it. So one, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you what you want to do with it. Now, another, another thing that you can do is you can, where this uh, base is, where we'd sewed the bag together with the beads, you can take that and you can continue on a brick stitch, like a V pattern if you want, and then add fringe. I mean, there's so many possibilities with these. One second. Hey. No, 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 get. Okay, sorry about that. My cat was eating the plant again. He's a little plant eater. But, you know, the possibilities, it's, it's really the limitations are your own imagination. So, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five dark green. Seven, eight, light green. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Skip that last bead. And come up. that and then come down in that neighboring bead there we go and we're getting there and you know you don't want to pull your uh, fringe too tight but you don't want it too loose either because you don't want to gap at the base there. We need eight dark green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then eight regular green. 
Ooh, that's a little tiny bead. Uh-oh, we have a little bead. A little hole, I mean, that won't go through. Put a new one on. There we go. Toss him. And always make sure you get every bead on your needle or it will leave a gap and it won't lay straight. I have the squeakiest chair. It just sits here and squeaks at me. Every time I move, it's like squeak, squeak, squeak. And I've tried like using some WD-40 on it and it still does it. So I don't know what causes it. There we go. Eleven dark green. And then eight green. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Let's get that last bead. I'm going to go all the way to the middle with you guys so you know the pattern. And then after the middle, I'm going to let you finish off. And I'm going to finish mine because it's going to be the same going the other direction. But this way you'll know what the pattern is if you want to use this pattern. And you'll have it if you want to use it. And we'll go back down. So we'll get to the center and then go from there. Here we go. Now we get some other colors in. So we're going to do an orange. One orange, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen dark green. And then three dark blue. And three light blue. And an orange and a yellow. Down. 
Then we need a yellow. This bead pad always rolls away from me. Okay, a yellow, a orange. Let me count here. Fifteen, fifteen dark green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then three dark blue. And then three light blue. I'm gonna check my counting here. So it never hurts to double check. I'm gonna zoom out a little too, we're kind of close. I'm gonna, uh, never hurts to double check your counting. Two. Let me hang on one second. Okay, we're good. I just wanted to make sure. I had one sticking to my hand and I didn't know, I had a bead sticking on my hand. I didn't know if that was on, supposed to be on there or not. So, okay, and then we need an orange and then a yellow. Oh, I like this fringe. This is looking neat. I am liking this. Looks really pretty with the bag. And come up through, make sure we get all our beads. Oops, I'm caught. There we go. Oops, pull it through. Caught again, jeez Louise. There, caught on everything. <clears throat> and come back down on your neighbor, some neighboring bead there. <clears throat> oh, my tail's in there. There we go. Alrighty. And now we need a dark blue, a yellow an orange, one dark blue, one yellow, one orange, and a one, two, and 17 dark greens. Okay, and then three dark blue, three light blue, okay, and an orange and a yellow. that pattern coming in with that that's really pretty that green on camera looks black though that it's more of a hunter green it's really a pretty green but it looks black on camera Come back down on, our, on the neighboring bead. Okay. 
Okay. And now we need a light blue and a dark blue. One light blue, one dark blue, and one yellow, one orange, okay, and then, let me count here, hang on. And then 14, 14 dark blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then five dark green. One, two, three, four, five. And then three dark blue. One, two, three. Uh, three light blue. One, two, three. An orange, one orange, and one yellow. See, now it's not going to be as long as I thought it was going to be, which is cool. So I'm cool with that. It looks beautiful. I love the fringe on it. I'm so excited about this. I've been wanting to see this done for so long. So this makes me really happy. I hope you guys is. I hope yours is turning out this cool too. Even if you did your own pattern, I, I mean, I really hope you guys were able to make this turn out so, it's so beautiful. So I hope my instructions were enough to make you, help you make one of your own. Because this is just lovely. This would make a beautiful gift for someone. And we haven't even done our necklace yet. So this is going to be very impressive. Now we're going to need a dark green. One dark green, one light blue, one dark blue, one dark green, one light blue, one dark blue, and then one yellow and one orange. And then, let's see, let me count here. Sixteen dark blues. Okay, and then one, two, three, four, five dark greens. One, two, three, four, five. Then three dark blue. One, two, three. And three light blue. One, two, three and an, one orange and one yellow. Okay, and we'll pull that last one down and put our needle through. I'm gonna have to start doing it in two trips because I don't think I can get it in one. And then, And through and 
and then come back down through the neighboring bead. And I know this is a terribly long video, but look at this project. It is insane. I, it's going to take us some time, isn't it? I don't know if I put enough thread on my needle. We'll find out. We can always attach more if we need. Almost to the center here. Now we need a, I got to turn my a AC down. It's kind of getting warm out. Um, we need one light green. One dark green, one light blue, one dark blue, one yellow, and one orange. Okay, and then let's see here, we're going to need one, two. Eighteen light blue. Eighteen. Six, seven, eight, nine, two, six, eight, nine. Uh-oh. That one's too small. Dang it. Then I lost him. Five dark green. One, two, three, four, five. And then it's getting long now, isn't it? One, two, three dark blue. One, two, three. And then three light blue. One, two, three. And then two yellow. One, two. I'm going to skip that last bead and go on through the rest of them. Make sure we get them all in there. Well, okay, fine. I will just do that then. Yeah, she's sweet. Right. Come back down. Our neighbor here. There we go. It's looking very beautiful. I am loving this. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys are too. Now we are to our center. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do this and then we can continue on separately and I'll come back and we can get her finished. Now, so we're going to need two light greens or, you know, regular greens. So two of those guys. And that bead doesn't want to go on. I keep getting my hand 
in my beads. Okay, so two light green, one dark green, and then a light blue, so one light blue, one dark blue, okay, one yellow and one orange. And then a whole bunch of light blue. Let me count them here. Twenty. So we need twenty light blue. And then one, two, three, four, five dark green. One, two, three, four, five. And then four oranges. So one, two, three, four, and three yellow. One, two, three. Oops, bumping into you there. I'm glad I drew the pattern for the fringe because I think it turned out really lovely. It matches the purse very nicely and incorporated a lot of the colors and added some nice dimension to it too. Here we go. And then we'll go back through your neighboring bead. And that's halfway. So that's our halfway point. Okay. Now I'm going to let you guys continue and you can either count what you have here, go off of what you have for your fringes or go back to the video. At the, you know, I would, I would recommend just back counting because this is a mirrored image. So skip this one here. Okay, the last one we just strung, and then just mirror this over to that side. So this one will be that one. That one will go over there. So you'll go this direction over, only over here. I hope that makes sense. So when you're putting your beads on, this is our center. So skip this one here, because this is our center. We don't need two of those. But the rest of this will be mirrored. So continue, you know, continue it over, mirrored onto this side and you'll get that really pretty pattern coming through. I'm going to continue with mine and then I will be back and we will get the necklace part on it and we will be done. So I will see you guys here in a minute. All right. So I day two of this, I had to go to work and stuff. So I didn't have time to finish this last night, but uh, I did get my fringe done. And this is what you should look like if you followed my pattern there. I think it turned out really, really neat. Looks beautiful. It really added to the purse, I think. I think it added a lot of uh, detail and dimension to it. Really brought it out. Now our last step is we need a way to hang this. So there's a few options out there. Now, <coughs> pardon me. 
You can do any kind of chain that you want. You can do a single beaded chain where it's just thread and beads. You could do one of those with multiple chains that are beaded. So you could do like two or three. You could do uh, you could do a daisy chain. You could do a Winnebago chain. You can do a flat peyote stitch chain. You could also do uh, well, like for example, what I'm doing, I'm going to do the sh a chevron chain, and I will sh I will go through and show you guys how to do that. And as far as options go, you can also make it to where it just goes over the head, or you can also do two separate chains and have a clasp to where you can clasp it. So that's entirely up to you. It depends on how long you want it. It depends on if it's something that you want to just be able to throw over your head and put on or if you want to be able to clasp it and to take it off and on. If you want a little shorter or a little longer, that is all entirely 100% up to you. Now, if you were to do a single chain, like a single beaded chain, just beads on a string, basically, you would want to attach that and then bead it and then attach the other side or attach it, add a clasp, and then attach this side, add a clasp, and then it'll go together. Because I'm doing the chevron chain, I'm going to actually attach it after I make the chain. Um, and I'm going to do an over the head chain so that I, I mean, I just, I think it'll be a little easier that way. And that's just how I want to do it. Because I want mine to be a little bit longer. And you can measure if you want, how long you want it. Or you can just eyeball it. It's up to you. If you're making it for a friend, you might want to ask them a length or kind of maybe ask them to measure for you. That way you can make sure that it's done correctly. Now, for your chevron chain, obviously we, we will need our, our thread and our needle. And we're also going to need two colors. And I'd like to do it with a lighter color and a darker color because it brings out the pattern of the chevron within the chain a lot nicer and it really makes it pop out and stand out. So for my colors, I chose my periwinkle and my navy for my two colors. So I'm going to get my stuff ready here and I will be right back. Okay, I got my beads all out here, the ones I want to use, and I got my needle threaded. And I used quite a bit because I'm going to make mine kind of long because it's going to be an over the head uh, uh, necklace. Now, so what I did with mine is I did a wingspan and then I did an arm's length from my one arm to the opposite shoulder. And that's what I did for the length of my thread. Now I'm gonna set this aside because we don't need this right now at the moment. And so to do our chevron chain, it's actually quite simple. There's not a lot of uh, steps to it, but it's once you get it, it's super easy. So. To start off, what you want to do is you want to pick up seven of your lighter colored beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then you want to pick up three of your dark beads. One, two, three. So seven of your light and three of your dark. Let me zoom in just a touch here. Maybe that'll help. Seven light colored first, and then three dark colored. And then you want to bring that down close to the end of your thread. Now, ugh, silly, hang on, I'm getting tangled up here. What in the heck did I do? Okay, <laughs> I'm getting tangled on stuff on my desk. Make sure I don't have a knot. I think I'm good. So bring your beads down. Oops, I missed one. Bring those down close to the end. You don't want to get cl too close because we want to be able to uh, tie off and hide our tail and things like that. So, you know, leave your six inch tail down at the bottom. Now, I like to take my beads and I'm just going to kind of, kind of just wrap them around my finger like this. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to take your needle and bring your, bring it through the first group of all the light beads, skipping those three dark beads. So just go through, back through those 
seven light colored beads and then pull your thread through and this is going to kind of create a little circle. Now you might have to kind of adjust it with your fingers and you're going to have something like that if you can see it. There we go. Now so this is your tail over here. I'm going to actually flip it around so this my tail is going to be coming out on my left here. So after that, that's just kind of your base. That's your kind of be your beginning. That's going to be the end of your chain that you're going to attach to your purse. Now you want to add three. So for our next step, you want to add three light beads. One, two, three light colored beads. Okay. And then you want to add three dark colored beads. So you're going to have three light and three dark colored beads, okay? And so you wanna take, you see here on here, you have your light colored beads, you're kinda of down at the bottom, and then your three are kinda of here up at the top. And so you wanna take your needle <coughs> with your beads on it, and you wanna bring your needle down and into that very last dark colored bead opposite of your thread here. And you always want to work opposite of your thread. So if your thread's on this side, you're going to enter this side. So our thread's on this side, on the right side, so we're going to enter onto the left side. And come from the top down, just like that, okay? And then just try not to get wrapped up in your tail and bring it on through. Just like that. And it's going to look a little wonky at first, but it will take its shape. And so you're going to have something that looks like this, okay? Now, what you want to do, I try and kind of pull to kind of keep things kind of tight and adjust it as I make it. You're just going to continue to add three light beads and three dark beads. So three light beads, three dark beads, three light beads, three dark beads, all the way through your chain. So we're going to put on three light beads. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So three light beads, three dark beads, and see now our thread's coming out of this opposite side. It's coming out of the left side now. So we wanna take our needle and go into that very last dark bead on the right side, like that, okay? And just pull it through. You might have to adjust it and pull it as you, know, you work on it, because it will be kind of loose at the beginning but it'll work its way through. So just give it time and just kind of work on it as you go. I'm kind of getting all bunched up and crazy here. There we go. And like I said, you have to kind of adjust it as you work on it. So now we're gonna be coming out of the right side and you can see that zigzag chevron pattern kind of coming along. And that's all this is, it's just a zigzag uh, pattern is all. And so you want to add three more light beads and three more dark beads. Like that. And see our threads coming out of this side here, out of the right side. Always work into your opposite side and go into that last dark colored bead. That's kind of a weird shaped bead. I didn't notice that. That's okay. Right like that. And then pull through. And it'll look kind of weird. You're going to think, well, that doesn't look right, but it will take its shape as you work on it. Okay, you're going to have some, see that you've got your V's and your zigzag chevron pattern coming through. So we need three more light beads. And three more dark beads. Just like that. And so we're coming out of the left side now, where our tail is. See, our tail's right here. And we're coming out of that side. So we need to go into, I want to give it a little tug here to kind of tighten it. Here we go. And we want to go into the right last dark colored bead. Like that. Okay. And pull through. And that's all this is. So this is... Uh, quite simple. This is not hard to do at all and it makes a lovely pattern for uh, necklaces.
And I thought it'd look really neat with this one. And we're gonna do this one, one or two more times and I'm gonna let you guys do it on your own. So three light beads, three dark beads, and then we're gonna enter opposite of where our thread's coming through onto that dark bead. So your thread's coming out of here. You wanna go opposite that side over to the last dark bead and come from the top and push your needle through that dark bead, okay? Just like that. See, we got our pattern coming in. It's looking really pretty. This will look really neat. Once you get it nice and long, it'll look really beautiful. So three light beads, three dark beads. I can pick it up, there we go. And then our thread's coming out of this side, over here. And we want to go opposite of that. Oh, I'm losing my beads. Put those back on there. Okay. So we want to go opposite of this side here. So we're going to go into this last opposite dark bead. Like that. Okay. And pull through kind of loosening up here. have to give her a little tug. And like I said, kind of adjust it and tug it and tighten it as you go along. And so that is the chevron chain, okay? I'm going to work on mine and get to the length that I want to get to. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm not going to add a clasp to mine. It's up to you if you want to add a clasp or not. That is your decision. But, you know, if you do, it's not gonna be hard to finish this off and then add a clasp and then, you know, attach it to your purse and then do another one. But uh, I will show you how to finish this off once I get to the length that I desire for mine. So I will be right back and we will, uh, I will show you how to finish off your chain and how to attach it to the purse. All right, so I got my uh, chain done here and I made sure with my uh, measurements that it went over my head and everything. And I did unfortunately have to add more thread because I did run out. And if that happens with you, bring us in a little bit. Um, basically what you can do is when you have the, when you finished one, you can go through and, you know, weave it in and out and tie it, tie it off do like a surgeon's knot, tie it real good, and then weave it in and out. And then you can add another thread and uh, then weave it kind of up and through. And then you want to be make you want to make sure you're going to be coming out on this side where the dark is, where your darker beads are. And then you can add your lighter beads and go through and it'll continue with the pattern just in case that happens to you. So to finish this off, what you want to do is you want to add seven of your light colored beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to want to add seven of your light colored beads to your needle. And then you're just going to want to bring those up and over, kind of like when you started uh, your uh, the beginning here at the end, which I've already, I took my tail and I already, uh, weaved my tail in and out and hit it. So, so it's kind of like when you start here, you're going to have this little hoop here at the end. And that's what we're going to do here with the seven beads. So we're going to take our seven beads like that. And then you're just going to want to go into the beads on the other side. So we're coming out over here and we're gonna wanna go into our lighter beads over here. I'm just gonna go down a few, these first three, and then just pull your thread through. Oh, if I can get my, I'm having an issue here. Oh, it's that last bead. Hang on, my last bead on here has a tiny hole. I can't get through. So I'm going to have to put a different bead on there. Like 
there's another one. Getting some tiny ones here. I kind of had some leftovers that weren't the best, so let me get two more on here. One, two, five. Make sure I have seven. Okay. And so we want to take our needle and we're going to go into these three lighter colored beads opposite of our thread. Like that. And just pull through. And see that will, I'm going to have to tighten it a little bit, but that's going to create that hoop at the end there. And so basically you kind of want to tie it or pull on it a little tight, make sure it's taut. And I'm going to keep kind of weaving in and out of some of these and make sure that it's nice and secure because we don't want this coming loose. And then I'm going to add some knots here. I'm going to add, I think about right here. And I'll just put a few knots in, make sure it's secure. I'm just going to do a surgeon's knot here. There we go. And I'm going to come back through. Maybe. There we go. Now, so that secured that. And the last step is just to attach this to our purse. Okay. So. I'm going to leave this on here. I am not going to cut this off because oh, I'm getting tangled up in my fringe because I don't want to have to reattach. I'm going to do that on the other end, but this end, I still have plenty of thread. So I'm going to weave back down to the end of my chain here and kind of get an area might be able to get to the right spot here. All right. Now, so let's see, we're going to have, oops, sorry, bumping into you there. These last two, the center two here, are what I'm going to work on or attach with. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's see where we're at here because I want it to be centered. So I'm not counting these two on the end. So I'm just counting these up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want to go through these two. So I'm just going to bring my needle through those two, if I can get it through. Oh, that's three. There we go. So I'm just bringing my needle through these two center ones here, like so. Now, to attach it, you want it obviously on either side of your bag. So what you want to do is you want to kind of get it as best as you can centered in that area. So for me, I'm going to try and line it up with these two top beads right here, okay? Because that's right where the fold is, and that should land in a really good spot. So first of all, I'm just going to bring my needle through those two beads right there like that. I don't know how well you can see me here. So we're on our side here, and then I'm going to bring it through those two, okay? And that should be about perfect as to where we want to hang it. Now, see, we went through those two beads here, and we want to make sure that we're lined up evenly. So I don't want it to go that way. I want it to go this way like that. And then I'm just going to go back through these two beads right here, just like that. 
and we're going to have to pull tight on there and that will attach see how that attached goes on there but we need to seriously reinforce that because this is a heavy bag and we don't want this breaking so we're going to come through this a few more times we want to make sure it's nice and taut and lined up good so we want to bring that through and then coming out of there so we're going to go through here again like that I don't know how many times these beads are going to let me come through but we're going to try and do three I'm going to do this a few times so we want to make sure that that's going to hold on tight See if that'll let me go through again. Oof, I don't know. It's a tight squeeze. Yep, it did. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to be able to get through on that. But that way, as you can see, is nice and secure. And I'm going to go through these blue beads one more time. I can get through. It's kind of a tight squeeze after a while. Just like that. There we go. And we want to make sure, double check, we're tight on that. Now, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to work it through these beads and just tie off and secure everything because we want to make sure that everything is going to hold real nice. If I can get through the beads, it kind of gets difficult towards the end. Okay, now I'm going to do a knot here. Do a double knot. So you want to make sure. And I mean, you can always use a little dab of glue and stuff, but I don't like to do that because I'm always afraid the glue will bleed through the beads. Now I'm going to kind of work it through a little more beads here. Probably going to have to go one at a time. I think I already have a knot in that one. We'll go over to this one. And that way, it's nice and hidden. And then we're going to add, we're going to, actually, I'm going to snip that. So snip that off just like so. And so we have one side of our chain connected now. So we got one side connected. And now we're going to have to connect the other end but we don't have an end on our chain. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put my connector into my chain here real quick. I'm just gonna take an end of this and connect it onto my chain. You can do it anywhere you want. A little further up is always good to kind of have it tucked in there nice. And I'm gonna tie that into that into there just like that and I'm going to do a surgeon's knot make sure that's how that holds on tight just like that okay now I'm going to take a smaller needle and I'm just going to work this little tail in a little bit And work it into the chain a little just so it's hidden so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of work him up more up the chain 
just to kind of hide that tail out of the way. There we go. All right, get that tail out of the way. I'm going to snip that off. Now, so we have our thread attached to our other chain, okay? And I'm just gonna work my way back down to those center two like we did on the other end. So I'm gonna just work my needle down there, or my thread down there and my needle so we can attach the other end. This will make it nice and secure. And it'll make it look nice. I kind of like the way the uh, chevron chain turned out. I think it looks really pretty. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna skip those two and we're just gonna count the six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to go through one, two. I'm going through that one already. these two here, as you believe. I can count. Yep, okay. So now we're coming out of the right spot with our chain. Now the key to this, I'm gonna have to zoom you out. The key to this when you're doing this is that you don't want your chain to be twisted because it's gonna make it lay funny and it's not gonna look nice. So you wanna straighten your chain out and make sure that it's not twisted in any way. So that's gonna be like that. And you can double check yourself too, I would recommend it. And that way you know the chain isn't twisted and it's gonna look real nice. You want it to be coming in the right direction and you don't want it to be twisted. Okay, now we're just gonna go back in through two of these like we did. And so I'm gonna kind of pinch my sides here. I'm gonna kind of look. And I do believe that, let's see here, these two right here are where I want to be, okay? Now, the tricky part with this is that this one is already attached. So, I'm going to mark these two beads with my other needle I have here. These two right here, okay. So those two are the ones I want to do, and uh, I marked them with my needle there. But I'm going to double, triple check that my chain is straight. So now we know that this is the direction we have to go with our needle, because I want to go through, if I, can, I hope you can see. Um, I want to go through these two beads right here. So I have to go down through these two on my uh, bag. And I'm all tangled up here. I don't know what I did. I have this underneath here. Underneath this. So again, I'm gonna double check myself. Straighten my chain because you want that chain straight. You don't want to put that on and have it be twisted. It just, it's not going to work. It's not going to look nice at all. Ouch, I broke myself. Okay. And these two beads here are the two that we need. So I'm gonna go through 
those two right there like that and just pull it through without getting caught in my fringe. And then that should be lined up nice and even. I'm gonna double check. It looks wonderful. Okay. Now, we have to go through the right two beads up here to make sure we're going through the right ones on your chain. And then just pull that taunt. Don't try not to get caught up like I am on everything. Okay, now that's on there. So I'm just, I'm gonna double check here real quick. Yep, okay, so we're straight and you can do that. Double check, just hold on to your thread when you do that so that it doesn't come loose on you. And then just keep going through your beads there and make it nice and secure. I go through as many as the beads let me because this these are heavy. These bags are so heavy and you don't want them falling off because that would be awful, especially after all the work we've done. through maybe there we go okay There we go. Okay, so we have that, gone through that there. And I'm gonna secure that like I did in the other one. I'm just gonna go through my bag back here and in the back. And again, I'm going to tie some knots. get through there try changing my perspective a little there we go and snip that off close like that. And then our chain is attached. I'm gonna back us up a little bit here. And there you will have your beaded treasure purse. Very beautiful. I think they turned out lovely. I love it. And another thing you could do is you could also 
over here on the side where your uh, chain is, you could also add some fringes over on that side also. So it's entirely up to you how you want to go about doing that. But that is the finished product there. That's how you make the beaded treasure purse. And I hope you guys were able to follow along all right with that. I know it was quite the uh, quite the intense pro uh, process here, but you know, I think it was well worth it. It turned out absolutely gorgeous and just stunning. It'd be a wonderful gift. It'd be a really nice uh, conversation piece too. People will probably really probably get a lot of compliments on that. That's a lot of work and it looks beautiful. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Leave them down in the comments. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave one. Uh, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys coming in and watching my videos and beading along with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks a lot. You guys have a great evening. Take care.